everyone. This is Jeffrey Smith, founder of the Institute for Responsible Technology, and this is day two of healing from GMOs. In the first presentation, Carrie Gillum explained how Monsanto hid the health dangers of Roundup herbicide and the active ingredient glyphosate, which the World Health Organization has declared a probable human carcinogen. So you may be thrilled to find out about the product you're gonna hear from here about today that can reduce the amount of glyphosate in the body by 74%, according to a preclinical trial. We'll be hearing from David Sandoval, who I originally met when he invited me to speak to an annual conference of his company, Perium, because they're non-GMO and they wanted me to explain the benefits of non-GMO to the audience. However, he really got my attention recently with a new product that can reduce glyphosate by 74%, as I said, and not only that, but it's also designed to counteract other ways that Roundup and GMOs may damage the body. It can, according to the, to the research, help rebuild the microvilli, which are the fingers coming off the walls of the intestines. It can remineralize the system, which we know that Roundup can create problems with, and also can help repopulate the body with healthy gut bacteria. He'll be joined by Andre Naj, who helped him formulate this product. So I hope you enjoy hearing about this product, how, which is very, very specifically designed how to help the body reverse the damage done by GMOs and Roundup. Safe eating. Hi, everyone. This is Jeffrey Smith from the Institute for Responsible Technology on the Healing from GMOs series. We're here with David Sandoval, who's the founder and CEO of Purium and has worked with many of the great health pioneers of this and last century. Welcome, David. Thank you, so great to be here. And also Andre Naj, who has been investigating the health benefits of a couple of really unique products that we want, to hear, want you to hear about. Welcome, Andre. Thank you, Jeffrey, it's great to be here. Now, I have to say, David, you got my attention. I mean, you got my attention when <laughs> you said, reduces glyphosate in the body by 74%, without changing the diet. I'm like, who is this, a liar or a magician? So, uh, and then you created this uh, biomedic and then started advertising that it was designed to counteract the negative effects of GMOs and Roundup. And I'm thinking, have you been reading my mind for the last 10 years? It's like, as I've been talking to healthcare practitioners and product formulators, I'm thinking, okay, it, it, you know, glyphosate binds with minerals and making them unavailable. It damages the gut bacteria, it damages the cell walls, it messes up the mitochondria, it messes up the, uh, the hormones. What can we do? What regimen can we do? And all of a sudden you come up with a pill to actually do something that I didn't even think was possible. So kudos to you. What was in your mind, I can guess, when you created this, and how did you go about doing it? Well, thank you, Jeffrey. And, and yes, I have been following you for 10 years, and yes, I am inspired by you. And, you know, it takes a lot of people to be willing to put on the armor and raise their sword and go out into this battle. So thank you for everything you have done. You are awesome. You're most welcome. Thank you. Now, here's the problem. I first wanted to stop the use of GMOs, and I didn't realize the real problem was glyphosate. Not that GMOs aren't an issue. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm going to say GMOs are also the issue, but go ahead. But yeah, yeah there is a. So what I mean is, I didn't realize that there was this ghost issue. Right. That was, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so first it was get rid of GMOs, then it was get rid of glyphosate. And, you know, fighting, you know, um, whether it be in Kauai, or whether it be all around where we were fighting on the big island to fight against these companies and their experimentation next to schools. And we, we succeeded on a smart level. Now in nature, you could block, you could suppress, or you could repair. We failed in completely blocking. We have failed almost completely in suppressing. And so we had to leave ourselves to the repair. So I needed to examine the damage that was being done and what could be done about it. And that was the inspiration for this product to repair the damage done by this toxic chemical that has been banned now by Los Angeles, you know, um, County yes. and deemed a carcinogen by the state of California. All right. So you're, you have it in mind to repair the damage done by Roundup. Now Roundup has 
a long litany of things. It's a probable human carcinogen, it's a teratogen, meaning it's linked to birth defects, etc. Which of the particular impacts of Roundup and its active ingredient glyphosate were you seeking to repair? Well, here's what we found was the main problem. Glyphosate was designed to kill all organisms in an environment that are not genetically modified. And when the residue of glyphosate is in food and we eat that food, it will actually kill the organisms in our body as well. An unintended consequence, but a dire and potentially deadly consequence. Now, let's follow it through the mouth, the esophagus, through the stomach, now into something we call the second brain, which is the gut microbiome. Now, the gut microbiome is so important to the body, it's called the second brain, and we found that this chemical was killing our second brain. So, okay, so the antibiotic nature was patented as a, as a biocide, as a basically an antibiotic, um, and there's a long, long list of, of microorganisms that it is designed to kill, and it kills favorably the beneficial stuff like the lactobacillus, not the nasty stuff like E. coli it's, I mean, and botulism, et cetera. So what, we know once that happens, then you know, that's involved with detoxification, protection of the, of the, of the intestines, uh, it's part of digestion, part of the immune system. So what was the next step? So let's imagine that you take and we can see into the lining of our stomach and we see these villi like grass growing up. And on top of those, we see this, what we call a mucosal layer or a biome layer. And this is full of those awesome lactobacillus bacteria that you're talking about, right? right. And so um, when that lactobacillus bacteria layer is destroyed, the villi begin to die. And when that happens, our body begins to die as well. So the goal, was to eliminate the toxin that was killing and causing the problem to begin with. And that was the key. And once that was accomplished, to feed and nourish those bacteria and the villi so they could regrow and be restored, as will our health be restored when this happens. All right, I heard three things. One, stop the antibiotic nature of, of the glyphosate so that it's not hurting the microbiome, uh, rebuild the beneficial bacteria and the muc mucosal wall so that it continues to produce the barrier, and three, to grow and strengthen the villi, the fingers coming out of the intestines, which do the absorption. Is the, are those the three things we're talking about? Super close. We're going to lift up, like lifting dirt out of the carpet, right? right. Think about that, how a vacuum pulls the dirt out of a carpet, and once we pull it up, we're going to sweep it out with these explosions of lactobacillus bacteria right? Lactobacillus bacteria. And then after the chemical is gone, we will see the repopulation of the friendly bacteria and the regrowth of the villi. So I hope that was descriptive. And, okay, and that was good. So, all right. So, so you have to take out the, the toxic element and allow the villi to grow after that. Okay. So the detoxification process. Was key. So how we accomplished that was really amazing. Um, nature provides us with a tool called fulvic acid. Now in plants, they use fulvic acid to take minerals that are not bioavailable, minerals that are not bioavailable in the soil and transport them into the root system. Amazingly, when we eat those plants, the same fulvic acid transports them from the plants that we eat into our cells. Now the reason why is because fulvic acid could move things, they, it modulates chemicals and minerals. So by taking the fulvic acid, we're modulating and chelating it up. Then with the explosions of lactobacillus bacteria, we are sweeping it out. This is the start of something amazing. So now in this case, the fulvic acid usually takes positive beneficial minerals and makes them available to the plants. Puts and, them in. And plants to humans. Are you using the fulvic, are you saying you're using the fulvic acid to actually pull out the toxins as well a, so we can do it's, both? It's ability to modulate elements and to make them move around. We're taking advantage of that and actually have found that it could 
sweep up and lift them up into an area where the lactobacillus, once they're free, the lactobacillus could grab onto them and eliminate them. So the lacto, this is interesting because, you know, people talk about the beneficial role of lactobacillus. You know, we buy it in pills, it's in yogurt. But you're telling me that the lactobacillus is actually an escort and that it takes the negative pieces that shouldn't be in there, the negative toxins, and it escorts them out of the body. And that's because people talk about the microbiome as being a detox, detoxifier. So this is one way that it does it. The lactobacillus grabs the negative stuff and escorts it out the body. And Absolutely. So, now that, remember, a healthy yeah. microbiome is pulling nutrients in and pushing toxins out. A compromised microbiome reverses that. It pulls toxins in and pushes nutrients out. And this causes a series of problems. Now, experts tell me that it may be linked to autism. It may be linked to Alzheimer's, but we know it's linked to leaky gut, and we know it's linked to a compromised immune system for sure. And leaky gut is correlated with, with autism, et cetera, um, and Alzheimer's. So um, the components then are the folic acid, which helps vacuum up the shag carpet from all of the, the toxins. And are you saying it's the glyphosate that gets stuck there or other things that the glyphosate allows the toxins that allow it to accumulate because the glyphosate's present? Well, I learned from this guy named Jeffrey Smith. That would be me. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that actually glyphosate chelates minerals out of the body before the body, it pushes minerals out of the body before the body could absorb them. It actually causes significant mineral deficiencies even in a healthy otherwise diet. And this is bad. So unless we get the glyphosate out, the minerals will never come in and so we've also added humic mineral ore humic ore is going to remineralize the body it becomes a fertilizer for the regrowth of the villi and also as you know is vital for the cultures of the normal you know bacteria that should live there to grow faster now one last point we're using a patented lactobacillus that's a spore so we're not putting bacteria in we're putting the spore in and basically, the egg, the spore is, the, is what it grows into the bacteria. Imagine a dandelion that grows up and pops up with all those little things, and then you blow it, and they spread everywhere. That's a spore. I know you know. I'm just explaining in a way for everyone to understand. So we put the spore in, and when that opens up and it explodes, that's when it grabs the glyphosate and moves it out. So we've got 500 million explosions happening not just a bacteria, 500 million explosions happening, grabbing it and taking it out. That's unprecedented. And that sets the stage for an ingredient that was actually discovered by one of the great icons who I greatly admire, and that's Albert St. Georgi. Tell, tell me about Albert. Albert St. Georgi, oh my God, it almost makes my blood boil a little bit because no one knows who he is but he discovered vitamin C. He was the first one to create a vitamin that was beneficial to the human body, discovered that it reversed scurvy, and then vitamin C was synthesized, commercialized, and a certain person won a Nobel Prize. That was the minus, go ahead. Ascorbic acid, which is not vitamin C. So Albert St. Georgie, a truth teller, a fighter, you know, uh, it was pushed aside for something that was actually synthetic. And this started the whole problem. Just so, a solution was being created as well. So what did you get from him? Well, he took a fractionalized, um, nutritious uh, wheat germ extract, and he found that it could rebuild the villi of animals who are compromised with by antibiotics, you see. And so he found a way to reverse that in animals, and it was amazing. And then he realized it could potentially fight cancer because 70% of our immune system is triggered by our gut microbiome. So he was enamored with the potential of this um, fractionalized wheat germ extract, this nutritive wheat germ extract, which is a fraction of wheat germ, specifically regrows villi. All right, so when we talked about your original goal of what to do here, um, one of the things was, 
clean the system, carp, you know, vacuum out the shag carpet and grow those, as you call them, leaves or whatever. <coughs> fingers. Yeah, the grass, yeah. Yeah, the grass. And, and this is the piece that does that, this fractionalized wheat. That's plant. right. Now, um, I should mention that Bt toxin, when fed to, I think it was mice, yeah, it was mice, not rats, um, it damaged the microvilli, causing some to be shortened and disappeared. And I've shown pictures of that in various uh, forums all, for all over the world. And of course, Roundup or glyphosate in an animal study uh, showed that it damaged the microvilli as well. Uh, the microvilli gets damaged in celiac disease, so it becomes basically stripped away. So we know that if we're talking about healing from GMOs, then the rebuilding of this villi may be a very important key. And so you're saying that the fractionalized wheat germ extract does that. Okay, so now right. we have Let's the call it nutritive, nutritive wheat germ extract, but it is a fraction of wheat germ. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so let me recap, make sure we got this. We have the fulvic acid, which helps mobilize the toxins out of the body. We have the humic, uh, or, yeah. humic ore, which brings the minerals in. And we have the lactobacillus in the form of spores, which sends out all of these escorts to say, come along, you don't belong here, which brings the toxins out of the body. And then you have this new piece, which regrows the microvilli. Yes, this is a polyfunctional product that is unprecedented. And the results of the preclinical double blind, you know, studies, even though they were limited, even though they were preclinical, were so impressive that we are now inspired to spend a lot more time, a lot more money, because everyone now knows that this is where the answer is going to be found. All right. So let's, if, if there's anything else to discuss about the product, let's discuss it now because I really want to go into that preclinical trial. Is there anything else we need to know about the product itself in terms of how you derived it and what it's supposed to do? Because I, this will explain the results, which I've looked at from this preclinical trial, which are, in fact, jaw-dropping. So what I, what I want to emphasize is that the correlation, when you see a correlation between a reduction of a chemical and the reduction of a symptom, this is, how could I say it? This is the holy grail of the scientific community. Does it, you know what I mean? Yes. This is what you dream of, is to see a 75% reduction in C-reactive protein. All right, we're introducing something new here. You've just done the plot spoiling, which is okay. We're ready for it now. So okay. you know, did, let's I'm set good. it up. Let's set it up here. How many people took the trial? It was a small trial, but, it, but the numbers were staggering. Okay, so we had eight total participants in right. the trial, um, of which five were on the, in the active group and three were in the control group. All right. Now, the control group was actually given um, a product that is sold for the purposes of reducing glyphosate, the control group was. So this is, you're actually reducing the, 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 the likelihood that your product was, is gonna show a benefit by, giving, by comparing it to something which also is supposed to produce a similar benefit. Okay, just laying that out, go ahead. But you have to understand, I wasn't trying to impress anybody but myself with this study. All right. I simply wanted to prove that I had something worthy of offering the public period. But if I was going to do that, I needed to make sure that it was above whatever else was offered to the public. Does that make any sense? It does, absolutely. Okay. And so that was the reason. But when it came back that we were 75% reduction in C-reactive protein, my head began to spin because C-reactive protein is a biomarker for cardiovascular disease for, oh my God, just the list is as long as, so, and the correlation between 74.5% reduction in glyphosate and a 75% reduction in C-reactive protein is going to make the scientific community stand up and pay attention. They might even salute. You know, this is, this is really interesting because, you know, I have seen uh, research showing that, you know, on an organic diet, people reduce their, or their amount of glyphosate. Um, I've also known from research that the more 
glyphosate that's found in the urine of cows or humans, those tend to be the sicker cows and humans. But here we actually have, as you say, we reduce the glyphosate and we reduce the CRP, the C-reactive protein, which is known to, call, to be a marker for inflammation. And inflammation is, a, is the basis of some say all disease, some say many or most of the disease. So that is very impressive. Now, I don't know the biochemistry, and I don't know if anyone does, as to exactly what the, the link is between the glyphosate and the C-reactive protein. It may not be biochemistry, it may be physiology, it may be the well, chain. Yeah, go ahead. So what happens is in our immune response, you know, whenever we send out a white blood cell, you know, there's going to be cytokines and leukotrienes, and those are inflammatory. And so when our immune response is being activated because we have leaky gut, then it is inevitable that those cytokines and leukotrienes are going to be spread throughout the body, causing unnecessary inflammation, shutting down the blood flow of, of our capillaries, which causes even further inflammation. You see what I mean? It's a, it's a downward spiral. So okay. you, the, you hit the nail on the head. So there we go. So we do know, we do know that if you're getting the irritation in the, in the gut and you're creating an inflammatory response, particularly chronic inflammation, then you end up with higher CRP levels. And so if you're reducing that in the gut, you're reducing the gut lining inflammation, the immune system becomes, comes to relax, then the CRP level goes down. And this is a really good measure of what may be happening or what some people would say is likely happening and what some people say is happening, but maybe we need to get into it with a, tight, with a, with a finer microscope. Go ahead. Could I talk about depression for just a moment, Jeffrey? Are you going to depress me? By the way, bring in Andre if you want, because I know he's part of this whole process, but, but go ahead. Okay, first, um, I, I have to say that if people understand that serotonin is considered the happiness hormone, okay, and of the daytime. And melatonin is considered the happiness hormone of the nighttime, okay? Now, serotonin is produced in our microbiome. And when the microbiome is compromised, we fail to produce serotonin and depression and drug addiction are likely culprits. This is a likely, likely culprit in these two conditions, which are pervasive across America today. Think of that correlation. And then let me explain that we can increase serotonin dramatically by repairing the gut microbiome, making us more optimistic. Serotonin is the precursor to acetylserotonin, which becomes melatonin, right. which is the nighttime happiness hormone, right? And when we have enough melatonin, we balance our, um, our what is called the optimism hormone, which is testosterone. So when we have enough, um, you know, uh, serotonin, we produce enough melatonin, and then we produce enough testosterone, and those are the three happy hormones that we're so, yeah, so, so first of all, let me say, I am aware, and I think some of the viewers will become aware during this whole um, series, that yes, the serotonin piece is absolutely critical, that the microbiome interact with the cells of the gut and produce the serotonin, and the serotonin then 90% of the body serotonin is in the gut. Serotonin is linked to anxiety and depression and needs to be there in a proper amount, which then also can create melatonin, which is linked to insomnia. And sleep disorders and insomnia are linked to the consumption of GMOs and Roundup. And anxiety and depression are linked to the consumption of GMOs and Roundup. How do I know this? I just published a peer-reviewed article in the Journal of, of, of Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine where 3,256 3, people who avoided GMOs got better from 28 different conditions, including anxiety and depression. I think that was number four. Insomnia, that was, that was still up there. And also this testosterone piece is interesting because that could relate to fertility. And we have some evidence that there's a link between the consumption of GMOs and Roundup and infertility, which we can talk about another time. All right. So before everybody starts to think that I'm so smart, yes. I want you to understand that I truly, and I'm not joking, I am nothing more than a little bit of a Forrest Gump type of figure. Okay, Forrest, I, tell us why. I, I am so dedicated to what I do that people will come to me who are much smarter, much more connected, much more um, you know, studied, and they'll say, Dave, I see your mission. I see your passion. I see 
that you know you could take the brilliant science that I am aware of and bring it to the people. And one of those men approached me and he said, Dave, I, I've heard that you stood on stage and said that you want to end human suffering. That's a pretty big statement. He said, a greatest part of human suffering, did you know has to do with GMOs and glyphosate? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, do you know I may have the answer to repairing those villi? And, and, and somehow I was blessed to meet this man who then connected me with the people who are, who are working in Albert St. George's footsteps. And now I'm connected directly to the source. And I, I couldn't be more happy to introduce uh, Andre Nagy, and it's pronounced Andre if you're in the US, Andre if you're in Europe. So either way it works. And Nagy is pronounced Nagy in the US and Naj everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so Andre Nagy, Andre Naj, amazing man, welcome today. Thank you. I can uh, would like to add that the extensive study was conducted by the veterinary um, researchers at the University of um, Veterinary Science in Budapest. And yes, taking and continuing the work of Dr. Senjurji, um, the um, extensive study and measurements of the villa is what's key here. And when I met the group 10 years ago, I was involved in a animal study of a um, supplement that we just launched in Europe and it, but it involved the endocrine system and how animals, dogs, uh, pets uh, relate and affected by stress. So there I had the pleasure of meeting the lead researcher, uh, Dr. Kosha, who has uh, passed away last year, but left on uh, this uh, great legacy and work. Um, and so the extensive examination uh, measured the height length of the villi and they were studying many species of animal, but uh, uh, most um, studies were conducted on swine, having the um, most similar uh, anatomy of the digestive system uh, to the human uh, digestive system. And um, it was significant improvement, which led to the length of the villi, the surface of the villi, improvements, better absorption of nutrients. And this, of course, happened over almost a decade. And you know, it's interesting. If the, when, which decade was this? Was this recent decade? No, this is, uh, this is the uh, uh, 2000. Uh, okay, so I just want you to know that those animals were likely eating GMOs during that research. Very possible. Um, I, I was aware that the rat chow and the lab chow and all the normal chows that are given to animals during lab, during lab experiments is largely GMO and it does have Roundup in it and it does have heavy metals in it. And I was talking to some scientists, and I, I may have inspired some of them to do the research, but they did, some did research and found for sure that all over the world, the lab chow used for animals and also, of course, livestock is the standard GMO fare, and it has Roundup in it. So it's interesting, if it was repairing the microvilli under those circumstances, and if the animals were in fact eating the GMOs and the Roundup, then it's showing that it not only repairs it, but it repairs it even in the presence of those two things, which is exciting to hear. That's right. As did, as did our preclinical trial, we insisted that the people did not change their diet, and everyone in the trial was eating a standard American diet. All right. This, this thing blows my mind because I don't, there's one thing I do not understand and you can either enlighten me or we can all be confused. If the same amount of glyphosate was coming into their bodies and you were testing the glyphosate on the urine that was leaving their bodies and there was a 74.5% reduction in glyphosate leaving their bodies, where, where did it go? Was it broken down so that it wasn't detectable? Was it bound so that it wasn't detectable? Where did it go? Exactly. So what, what has happened is we've increased the body's ability to protect itself from the glyphosate. And once the uh, lactobacillus surround and bind and change it from being, you know, when you, as soon as you change the chemical compound to a microorganism. And so the C-reactive protein was the key to show that the C-reactive protein, anything over two is considered dangerous and the average is 4.75. Now, the C-reactive protein was reduced to an average of 1.2. Below the danger in, level. 
Anything under two is considered below the danger level. But here was the part that's gonna prove that we were the reason why. The people who are already below two reduce their amount by the same percentage uh -huh. as the people who are in the dangerous level. That could not have happened. All right, so first of all, that, that is amazing and it happens to be the same percentage of glyphosate. But you said that the lactobacillus, the particular type that you use, surround and break down. You think that it breaks down the glyphosate into its, into its smaller components? Is that why it's reduced in so, the in the study, we, we didn't just test, you know, um, one single thing. We tested multiple, you know, we went across and to verify, to cross verify. One thing we did not test were the compounds in the urine to find out, you know, whether or not that had occurred. But that's a very, very interesting. Um, yeah. There's yeah, some breakdown, LB, it's broken absolutely. down into AMPA, it's broken, yeah. We can, we, we can get together offline later and figure out where those 75 or 74.5% of that glyphosate went. But what's interesting is um, that it was the same percentage as the drop in the CRP, which, and that, you know, it happened with no, without a change. I'm imagining that if someone reduces their diet, <coughs> eliminates or reduces the amount of glyphosate substantially and does all this, then the benefits would be even better with the CRP and the reduction in glyphosate. Anyway, I know I interrupted you, Andre, uh, were you in the middle of something you wanted to share? Uh, actually, I was also going to um, uh, talk about the, um, uh, the legacy that Dr. St. George left behind and through his um, years of academic uh, research, obviously traveled throughout Europe and he you know, studied cellular respiration in Groningen in the Netherlands and uh, finished his PhD at the Oxford University, I'm sorry, at the Cambridge University in, in, in England, where he then uh, uh, isolated a um, uh, 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 humeric acid from, from uh, adrenal uh, gland uh, tissue. And uh, it was uh, back in uh, his home country in Saged University where he actually isolated the uh, vitamin C that they referred to, which he got the Nobel Prize for 1937. And uh, it was a peer of his, uh, Linus Pauling, who by the way said that uh, many diseases of living uh, organisms or things can uh, be because of deficiency of microorganisms. And uh, to talk a little bit about the research done in the uh, humic and uh, folic acid that we, we have here in this uh, great product, Biomedic, it comes from a leonidite layer that is um, a rare geological site in Central Europe. So you say a, leo, a leonidite. Leonidite, na na named after a, um, a gentleman, A.G. Leonardo, who was uh, the um, geological survey first. So, so this, com this, this humic acid, fulvic acid, or combination of humic or the fulvic acid, comes from the earth, comes from a specific area in a layer that carries what? What makes this one special? So the leonidite is a top layer to lignite, and it's an oxidized lignite, and it's very soluble in alkaline uh, solution. And it is a close surface mining, but it is a sterile source, sterile source. It's, it's fewer, it's organic. And uh, what makes it unique is it's organically bound uh, complex uh, forming molecules. All right, so, so uh, I'm a little slow on lignite and I'm a little slow on the organically balanced. Explain what the action of this is, if you wouldn't mind, and why this is so important in terms of supporting the work that we had just described that is supposed to be happening in the gut. Well, uh, the easiest for me to understand is all living matters, you know, decompose. And right. there's it's called a humification uh, decomposition process. And this takes over millions of years. And throughout this, these uh, uh, valuable minerals and micronutrients uh, form and they chelate uh, in a micro, in an organic uh, complex way. Okay. And they're very essential carrying and activating you know, the enzymes and vitamins in our body and lack of or, or a deficiency of this in the body blocks uh, essentially the activation of enzymes and vitamins, uh, which then of course produce you know, uh, molecules and things like that. So I don't know, Dave, I'm sure you have, uh, you can add to it. Well, every, every chemical reaction in the body requires an enzyme and every, every enzymatic reaction requires a mineral. So 
Minerals are the activators of all chemical reactions and mineral deficiencies literally mean that half your body isn't working. So you know, in um, this case, in this case, the element from the soil, is it carrying the enzymes or is it carrying the minerals or yes to both? Minerals and uh, nutrients. Minerals and nutrients. Now it's interesting, you, you may relate to this, that um, in a study in Germany, they wanted to counteract the effects of Roundup on dairy cows, and Monica Kruger and others fed the cows uh, sauerkraut juice and humic acid, and it, they got better. So the humic acid creating the minerals that were deficient. And so this is like when I was, I was actually in my mind a couple of years ago, thinking, well, if I were to design, and I started asking different scientists and doctors, what would you design to uh, counteract the effects of GMOs and Roundup? And the replacement and, and replenishment of the minerals was absolutely key for what you just said. Because, you know, I had to hear this over and over again till I really got it. I've heard that minerals are the key to the ignition, whatnot. It's basically, if you look at the, at the science, there's a certain, let's say, a trace mineral, and everything operates around that. So the whole shikimate pathway, the whole um, cytochrome P450 pathway, all these different pathways with fancy names and a lot of things that they do in the body, they're just dead machines that don't have the key to turn them on if they don't have access to these minerals. Now, it turns out that we are depleting the minerals in the food that is Roundup ready. The process of genetic engineering, it turns out, reduces mineral content even without being sprayed, according to research that I've looked at. Once it's sprayed, then the amount of minerals that even enter the, the plant from the soil become reduced, and the amount that translocates through the, through the plant is even reduced. And so they then are, are either eaten directly or eaten by the animals, and the animals now have reduced the mineral content and they're eating the Roundup, which reduces it even further. So we're eating the depleted uh, plants, the depleted animals, and the Roundup. And so this is one of the key elements for healing from GMOs and Roundup, is the replacement with assimilable minerals. Not biting on, on metal, but assimilable minerals that can work. You want to say something? Oh, just you're, the, what, what's exciting me is how you're pointing out that some experts say it's the minerals. And we've found the best minerals on the planet. Some say it's getting rid of the glyphosate, and we've found the best way to do that. Some say it's the, you know, the, the probiotics from the sauerkraut. You know what I mean? Like that. But we found a probiotic that does the exploding, like we talked about. And then, of course, some say it's rebuilding the villi. I listened to all of them. And I said, let's create a product that does all of that. And this is what we call, um, could I show a biomedic? Sure. Biomedic just means that it repairs our microbiome. You know, it's a medic, it's like a doctor to repair our microbiome, and it is the combination of all those ingredients, and hopefully you will see all of those effects in a synergistic way, compounding, and you know, just really impressive. Well, thank you. You know, uh, I wanna say like, you know, you got my attention in the beginning, you, you, you backed it up with two, with three things, really. You backed it up with, the theory behind it leading to the specific story of how these particular components of the biomedic came together to support that finding. Then you have the specific reduction in glyphosate in these, in the five people that went through the preclinical trial. And then you have the correlated change in the CRP, which is brilliant because it turns out even if glyphosate was not reduced, and the only thing that happened was the reduction in CRP. Well, first of all, you wouldn't be in this, in, in this series because I, it's like, if it doesn't have glyphosate in it or GMOs, I'm not interested. But the rest of the world probably would be if it can reduce CRP by 75%. The fact that it does that with glyphosate, now you're on my radar. And I'm really interested to, to see further research so that when people change their diet at the same time, and they, will they also look at the other components in the urine to see if the breakdown products are there. And to see the changes, well, you obviously don't, can't do a histological examination of the microvilli of the humans that take this, but there's ways we can, we can evaluate and see what's going on. We have these cameras that you could swallow now. Oh. And we're working on getting actual photographs of the villi before and after, and I think this will change a lot of minds. 
You but know, I, I'm still getting used to the fact that I could put a camera on a drone and go and go up. So now I could put a camera on a pill as a filmmaker. It's like, all right, this is pretty intense. <laughs> yes, let's just say that filmmakers didn't ever have to edit like this before, if you know what I mean, I when you hit that camera at the end. But anyway, um, the, the bottom line is that we have evidence now pouring in. We have tens of thousands of bottles that have gone out to the public. And the reorders are just astounding. The reorder rate is astounding. And the reports, the, the evidence, you know, epidemiological, empirical evidence is, it's made me cry. The stories I've heard have literally brought tears to my eyes. And when you could change somebody's life of, you know, a mother of a child and have the mother say, you know, with tears in her eyes, then you can't help but get tears in your eyes. So. You know, the promise is out there, um, and I just, all I can say is I humbly am, am in service, you know, in my life, and there is no greater service than service to children, in my opinion, and if we could help these kids in any way, this could be the greatest product in history. I really believe that. Well, I'm excited for your excitement. I'm excited for what I've heard today. Um, I don't know if it's the greatest product in history. I don't know what it'll feel like for me and for the, the people listening, but I have a feeling that some people will want to try it and see, and we, we have created a special arrangement, which you can see uh, on the, the pages where you can order the specials and there's a discount. And I, I think that if I, the way I see it, there's a discount and if you buy two, it's good. And if you buy four, it's good, but there's no reason to buy three. Because anyway, you can take a look for yourself. So guys, when you mention the fractionated uh, wheat germ extract, I know some people think wheat and they're going to go, oh no, I can't take it then. I'm not going to take this pill. Too bad. Can you make it without that? So Andre, can we make it without that? Do we need to? What's the story? Well, there is a trace amount of gluten, obviously being a wheat origin, um, the germ. But... Uh, there are three things. One, um, the proprietary technology that the uh, veterinary science group developed and um, perfected, which we have today, um, in the enzymatic extraction process, the um, gluten and the gliden is, is inactivated. Now, what does that mean? That means is when you take um, regular bread, of course, and uh, you take the uh, micro, uh, biomedic uh, capsule, there, there is a huge difference. One, um, regular wheat, uh, if you look at the PPM, let's just say, uh, you, you're looking at PPM parts per million. Okay, parts per million, okay. That means, you know, how many milligrams per kilogram of that uh, is in the product. And uh, uh, wheat flour, for example, has a, a protein content of, 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 of 8 to 12%. Let's just right. say that relates to about uh, 55 hundred uh, parts per million, okay? Now, uh, what the FDA uh, sets for, for uh, people with gluten tolerance or celiac disease is, is, is a 20 PPM, 20 parts per million All right. milligram per kilogram, okay, um, per uh, serving. What we have in micro, uh, in biomedic, is actually uh, not even a gram, so not, not even a milligram. Uh, it's so small that according to a study, that was published by the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 10 years ago, which um, uh, conducted a double-blind uh, randomized placebo study uh, with 20, uh, sorry, 49 uh, celiac patients, uh, biopsy uh, uh, certified or proven uh, uh, celiac patients. Uh, they established that the safe threshold of gluten intake for those patients is uh, 50 milligrams a day. So again, 50 milligrams compared to not even a milligram, and uh, we're really uh, talking micrograms. So I've been asked this question many times, and the answer is that a gluten-free pasta could be 20 parts per million, and you're gonna eat potentially three or 400 grams of a gluten-free pasta in a meal, right? We're giving you one third of one gram of something that is 200 parts per million, which means that in one bite of gluten-free pasta, you would get more gluten than in three servings of biomedic. 
So there is no effect on the body, even though it appears to be a higher, you know, point per million. The total amount is so small, the body doesn't even recognize it. All right. Well, I, I will leave it there because I'm not an expert at gluten sensitivity and people will be able to decide whether they want to play with those um, amounts of molecules. But my other question, David, is how many pills should we take or should a person take um, if they're just an average person with an average level of chronic conditions, if they're having acute conditions, if they're highly sensitive? What's the, what's the recommendation? So the amazing thing is, is that um, if you take more, you get a faster and more accelerated effect. It literally is a correlation that way. Um, so I personally started out taking two a day, and after three days, I moved to four a day. Some people like to start with one a day for the first few days and then switch to two a day. We are recommending 30 days at four a day. And this is to dramatically and immediately impact a reduction because most people in California, men were tested at 500 times the amount that caused liver disease in rats. We need a rapid and dramatic reduction and that's the dose that I am recommending. However, as you know, from one capsule up to four is gonna be a safe range for anybody to use. So when you talk about one per day, two per day, or four per day, is it done? PM. Just so one, so if it's one per day, you're just taking it in the morning. If it's four per day, it's two in the morning and two in the afternoon with meals, without meals, does it matter? It does not matter, but I would suggest that you, you know, take it prior to a meal if you can, because I want that protection waiting for you. All right. So prior to the meal, you recommend for the first 30 days to do a big clean out of four. And um, is there a concern that highly sensitive people, maybe people who have multiple chemical sensitivities? Absolutely. Do, do, I, do, do they need to take very, very little at the beginning to see, or they may do that anyway? Do you have a recommendation? There's two schools of thought. In the Chinese school of thought, you take a loading dose and you try to effectuate an immediate impact. However, since you say we're a loading dose, do you mean a large amount or a small? Like four a day, yes. All right. However, in a sensitivity scene, you want to start with a half dose versus right. a double dose. So I would go saying start with two a day, work your way up to four. Okay. As opposed to going from four a day and down to two. Now, 30 days have gone. I've spent my four a day. What do I do now? So what you need to ask yourself is, have I separated myself completely from the problem? Am I eating completely organic? Have I checked my environment to mitigate my exposure? And if you've done that, one a day is going to be fine. One a day in the morning, okay. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, well, I give it to people to make a decision based on this news, and I would like to hear from people once they try uh, this, if they do, then what the results are, because it's exciting to hear the possibilities of reducing glyphosate and inflammation at the same time. So I want to thank you both. Is there anything else you want to add before we close? You know, just that um, I, I am so humbled to be part of this. And, you know, I, I feel like I stand on the shoulders of giants, you know, um, when we talk about Ann Wigmore and Albert St. Georgie and you, Jeffrey, and just the, the ability to be here and, and fighting this fight and, and, and working with you. And, and I'm fighting this fight and I feel so all alone. And all of a sudden, Andre throws me a sword, you know, and, and, and imagine that you're in a fight and you got no weapons. And all of a sudden, Andre throws me not just a sword, but the best sword that's ever been made to fight this battle. And so if it weren't for you, if it weren't for Andre, um, you know, I would just be a tree that fell in the forest that nobody heard, you know? Well, you know, David, you actually, on my screen, you are standing right on the shoulders of Andre because <laughs> you're in the upper left and he's right, right on his shoulder. So uh, how's that feel for you, Andre? <laughs> I'm so honored to be on this uh, interview and uh, I just, um, 
feel the same way like Dave has. And, and my vision and mission in life was always to find the best, uh, uh, you know, of, of, uh, for humanity. And uh, I, um, you know, when I met Dave and I, he refers to me throwing the swords. I didn't even believe that I would be on your show uh, when, when just prior to that I was sharing the video of you and Dr. Stephanie Seneff, which was enlightening for me. And of course, threw all the puzzles together. And I didn't say much on this show, and, and, and I just, again, thank you for the opportunity. And I will continue my quest to learn and, and fight uh, for, for, for you and with you, along with you. So thank you so much. Sure. So we have here two visionaries, and you, if you've been listening carefully, you realize what motivates these men, and that is a drive, a mission for health, a mission for exploration. But there's another piece that um, they actually take steps forward in areas that no one else has and are guided by the wisdom of the people in the past. So uh, I think we can all take a lesson from that in our own missions to think huge. I have a t-shirt that says, think huge, thinking big is so last century. So to think huge, you know, your, your point about ending suffering on earth and you're stepping up, Andre, to say, I've got something that could help. This is really exciting to meet, to meet both of you and to hear what you've come up with together. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jeffrey. It's been an honor. Safe eating, everyone. <laughs>